in your previous work with empirical and molecular formulas, you were always given the lab data in a way that made it easy to um, do your calculations. Here in this next example, we are going to be looking at determining the empirical formula from a complete combustion reaction. So the data is going to be something that we're going to have to pull apart from each one of these questions before we can actually plug it into that skill that you now have um, that's very fluid, which is calculating out an empirical formula. Um, so these are a little bit more complicated and a, a bit more realistic in terms of what researchers are actually dealing with. Um, so you have this example of a complete combustion reaction. Again, in a complete combustion reaction, you have a fuel that is burning in the presence of oxygen gas, and then there's enough oxygen gas for that fuel to be completely converted over to carbon dioxide and water, and you're not getting side products other than that. So all of the carbon that is in that fuel is going to be completely converted over into carbon dioxide, and all of the hydrogen is going to be completely converted over into water. Now you'll notice that the oxygen's a little bit more complicated. In compounds where oxygen is involved, the oxygen is going to both come from the compound itself and the oxygen in the atmosphere, and it's gonna be redistributed over to the oxygen in carbon dioxide and then also in water. So the two elements that we rely on most strongly in these examples are gonna be carbon and hydrogen, and then oxygen is gonna be figured out through subtraction, you know, what's left over. So step one is to determine the grams of each element present in the original compound, and that is going to be um, where we'll pick up our old use of knowledge in calculating empirical formulas once we're done doing this first step. Carbon in uh, carbon dioxide is always found in the ratio of 12.01 to 44.01. We're getting that from the mass. And so we're always going to have a ratio that's going to be 0.2729 or 27.29% of carbon uh, dioxide is carbon. Hydrogen is always in the ratio of 2.02 to 18.02. So again, 11.21% of water would be actually hydrogen. We're gonna actually use that information to calculate how many grams of hydrogen, how many grams of carbon are in each one of um, these samples. Oxygen will then be found by subtracting out the mass of the carbon and hydrogen that we've just found from the original mass of the sample before the combustion reaction occurred. The next thing we'll do is convert the grams of each element to moles and then divide each molar amount by the lowest value modify it as needed, write out our empirical formula. So very, very similar to the process that we've done before. Honestly, the only thing that's different about combustion reactions is that we have to determine our grams before we get started. All right, I'm going to have you scroll down to, in your notes, I'll have you scroll down to this assignment. So this is where you're going to do all of your practice for these problems. Um, as solutions to these problems, along with additional practice or advanced level problems for those of you looking to challenge yourself, can be found on that chem team um, mole we'll combustion analysis. I am going to post an answer key with all of this stuff worked out as well, so you don't have to go to that website. But again, it's good practice if you are wanting additional things or you want to challenge yourself a little bit more. All right, so taking a look at this first example, we have a 1.5 gram sample of a hydrocarbon. And that hydrocarbon, that's our original sample mass, so this is before it's burned, undergoes complete combustion to produce 4.40 grams of CO2 and 2.7 grams of water. What is the empirical formula of this carb compound? So it's a hydrocarbon, again, just basically telling us that we have hydrogen and carbon. There could potentially be oxygen in this compound, and we'll know that for sure once we are done. Um, when we add up the masses of the carbon and the hydrogen. All right, so starting out, we need to find out the grams of carbon. So what we're going to do is take that 4.40 grams of CO2, and we're going to multiply that by the 0.2729 which again reflects that there is 27.29% of carbon dioxide is carbon by mass. So 4.40 times 0.2729 gives me a number of 1.20076. Now that's in grams. 
one of the mistakes that students who are starting this off will make is that they will think somehow that they magically got moles from that. So that is grams of carbon. I'm going to go ahead and carefully label that. Hydrogen now is going to be 2.70 grams of water. And we're going to multiply that by the percent of hydrogen in water, which was 11.21%. And I get an answer of 0 0.30267 grams of hydrogen. Now, if I want to know if there's oxygen in this compound, all I have to do is add the masses of carbon and hydrogen together. And if it doesn't equal the 1.5 or if it isn't really close, then I know that I must also have oxygen in the compound. Now, generally in the examples, they will indicate that there's oxygen somewhere in that um, process. All right, next step, I know now I have grams of everything, so now I'm going to divide by the molar mass of each of these to get how many moles I have. So I get 0 0.09998 moles of carbon. And then down here, I'm going to divide by 1.01. I'm going to get 0 0.29967. We are now back on track, right? This is what we did before. So our smallest number of moles is at 0 0.09998. Be helpful if I wrote down all of the nines. And that's going to give us a ratio of 1. And then we're going to do the same thing down here. And again, these would be the moles would be canceling out to give us a whole number. And that gives me 2.997, so that's actually going to be a 3. All right, so then our last step is just write down the empirical formula of this, since we don't have to mess with anything else. In the order that it was given to us for data, so carbon is going to come first, then hydrogen, and there are going to be three of those. All right, let's just do one more example problem. I'm going to scroll down to example problem number three. All right, a 0 0.250 gram sample of a compound known to contain carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. See, they clarify there that there's these three compounds, which is, again, good. We can calculate directly what the carbon and hydrogen masses are. We'll add those together, subtract it from that starting mass to get our oxygen mass. All right, and then we produce, these are the numbers we need, 0.3664 grams of CO2 and 0 0.1500 grams of water. All right, here we go. So carbon, um, 0.3664 grams of carbon dioxide. Multiply that times the ratio of carbon in carbon dioxide to 729. And that gives me 0 0.09999 grams of carbon. Again, make sure we're labeling that so we know that that's not moles yet. Hydrogen, we're going to have um, the mass of water, which is 0 0.1500 times 0 0.1121. Again, that's the percent of hydrogen in water. That gives me 0 0.016815 grams of hydrogen. And I'm going to calculate out the mass of oxygen here. So I'm going to put my oxygen here. Um, we're going to take 2.5 or 0 0.250, sorry, minus the mass of the carbon. and the mass of the hydrogen. Oh, 
again, a really important step to figure out how much we actually have of the oxygen since it is combined um, with it's in the compound plus the oxygen from the atmosphere. And we only want to know what's in the compound. All right, if I calculated that out correctly, the mass of oxygen should be 0 0.133195 grams. All right, we're back to what we've done in the past. So we're going to go ahead and divide these out by their molar masses. Make sure you're using the correct molar masses. I've messed that up already this morning. I should be labeling these. These are moles. All right, and the last one, I'm dividing this one by 16. Okay, so in looking at these, I can kind of just do a really quick comparison, and my smallest whole number ratios for these moles are going to be, I shouldn't say whole number ratios, the smallest uh, number of moles for each one of these is carbon and oxygen, and they look like they're going to end up being the exact same. So instead of writing it all out, I'm just going to say that once I've divided it out, I'm going to get a one for each one of those. So it's going to shortcut it for me a little bit. And then the only one I'll actually divide is this one right here. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and grab the one from oxygen for this. So 0 0.0083247. And I get an answer of uh, one point nine nine. 989 nine, so that's going to be a 2. All right, that worked out pretty simply, so we are going to have a final formula of C H 2 O. Again, just to recap this process for you, um, make sure that you're starting off by first calculating out the grams of carbon. You're multiplying the mass of carbon dioxide given to you in the problem by the percent of carbon in carbon dioxide, which for our purposes will always be 0.2729. Um, and then you're going to do the same thing for hydrogen. So take the mass of water, multiply it by the mass of hydrogen in water, which for every example we do is going to be 0.1121. Once you know those two masses, if oxygen is involved, subtract the masses you just found from the mass um, that you started off with from the sample, get the mass of oxygen. Once you have the mass of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, divide each one of those um, sample masses by their molar masses, get the number of moles. Then once you have that information, divide each one of your newfound moles by the smallest number of moles you have to get your mole ratios. And again, your mole ratios are going to reflect the subscripts of your empirical formula.